And I am the BX Bomber along with Roger, the Big Yankee fan. Say hello, Rog. Hello, BX Bomber. Everything is going pretty good. How are you doing? Pretty good, man. I, I kind of woke up late today after that game last night. 13 innings. Yes, absolutely. It was um, at least the Yankees after that uh, brutal uh, series in Boston. They have played well against the White Sox, which they should do because the White Sox are not a very good team this year. They're a rebuilding team. And uh, the Yankees had the strong 7 to nothing win on Monday night. And then uh, yet last night, uh, it was a long 13-inning game, and Andrew Hall had a very good game. And uh, he hit a home run along with uh, John Carlos Stanton hitting a home run. And uh, then Andrew Hall had the, uh, the RBI single in the 13th inning to get the Yankees a board to three victory in uh, 13 innings, which was uh, very good. So the Yankees have taken the first two from the White Sox. Yeah, and and that uh, left field, I think it's the left fielder, right? He robbed two home runs the same way. Did you see that? Yes, Engel. Yeah, Engel he robbed Engel. Bird and I think Stanton, right? Was it Stanton? Uh, he robbed Bird and then he robbed Higashioka. Yeah, Higashioka. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe that. That's, that was two runs right there. And that was 0-0 zero, zero at that time. And we could have right. It was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. He jumped over the fence basically and pulled the home runs back. Yeah, you don't see that anymore in baseball. You know, that's like the Dave Winfields of the day. You know, exactly. It was an incredible, incredible plays by uh, Engel, and those were two home runs that were robbed from the Yankees. But the Yankees have had uh, a good series so far, and uh, Lopez, the pitcher that was pitching for. The uh, White Sox last night was very good, holding the Yankees uh, hitless through the fifth inning and uh, throwing a 97-mile-per-hour fastball and being very strong. But the Yankees eventually got to him, and it was a one-to-one -one game until until Stanton hit the two-run homer, and yeah. then Abreu came back in the bottom of oh the Oh, my God. The with the two-to-one homer. And uh, so that went on for quite a while, tied at 3-3. Three to three. And, and Sonny Gray looked very well coming out of the bullpen. He looked very dominating yeah. there. Yeah, Sonny Gray did a uh, good job coming out of the bullpen and holding the White Sox down. And uh, he, did a, he, he had a strong performance helping the Yankees with that win. And uh, tonight, uh, the White Sox are starting a pitcher named Gio Lito, and uh, the Yankees are starting their pitcher, Severino, who has to get back on track. And that will be the, uh, the final game of the series tonight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. And, um, I, I, and you know, um, I was watching, uh, as I was watching the Yankees, I was watching Boston on MLB Network. I was say, oh, man, they got these guys, and they're going to have – uh, like an eight run inning or whatever it was, and to beat them ten to seven. I said, "Come on, man! These guys don't ever want to lose." No, you know? they uh, they they're having an incredible season, and uh, they came back and did it again. They're playing seven hundred baseball right now, and the Yankees are strong. They have uh, their seventieth win now. They're playing six twenty five baseball, basically on pace to win a hundred games, and uh, the Yankees have a fairly easy schedule coming up. Yeah. So the Yankees really have to make a and uh, play very well. And you'll be going to the game on tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow. And Jay Happ is pitching for the Yankees. And the Texas Rangers are supposed to be starting a pitcher named Gerardo or Gerardo. It might be pronounced Gerardo because he's Hispanic. And oh, okay. sometimes they don't pronounce the J's. And uh, he'll be starting against half tomorrow when we go to the game. Yeah, and st and plus, um, I was going to say, um, um, this guy, um, what's up with um, Aaron Boone? Is he in love with uh, Shane Robinson? He's I always putting him in now. Right. I was like, what is with this guy? I know. He's putting him in quite a bit. And... As we talked about on some of the prior podcasts, is that this would be Frazier's spot. Yeah. Frazier would really have major opportunities, but he's struggling with the with the concussion syndrome. Oh, and remember we were talking about Jacoby Ellsbury? Yes. Well, he has just had surgery now. That's right. Six months out. A labor. Yeah. 
so so. But um, he, let's he keep let's keep talking about Clint Frazier. The other day, okay. uh, two days ago, Michael K came out of his face and spoke very badly about Clint Frazier, talking about he has to hurry up and 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 get well. That he's doing that on purpose and blah blah blah. You know, and Yankee fans took that kind of seriously, man. Actually, Yankee fans actually wanted Michael K to be fired for that. You oh, know? Oh, wow. Yeah. I, and, I and, didn't know and, if I would go that far, but and, I, and, I, and Clint, know, I do. Go ahead. And uh, Clint Frazier actually responded back. He said, listen, man, I'm, I'm here trying to recover. It, it's not my fault that I have a brain thing or whatever is going on. You know, he's, he said he's really trying, so don't talk about him like that. And so that was right. yesterday. So I don't know what the Yankees are gonna do, but you know Michael K. He acts really funny on on uh, on on uh, ESPN Radio. You know, he yeah. talks really funny, know, yeah. and, and you know what? I don't really like that, man. Yeah, yeah, he uh, yeah, he basically uh, said uh, off the cuff uh, things. I I read about that myself, and saying he was talking about Ellsbury and Frazier. Yeah. And how they have to get their act together and get back. And then Frazier uh, tweeted back to him that I'm doing the best I can. I'm not taking this right now. And I don't appreciate you uh, insinuating things about me. So it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a rift between the two of them. Yeah. And I think Michael K was a little bit out of line with what he said. And, and, and I'm going to give you the reason why he's out of line. Because he's there talking with Peter Rosenberg. And Peter Rosenberg, he's from Hot 97, and he feels himself the same way Michael K does. You know, he talks all this crap about people and rappers or whatever on Hot 97 in the morning show, you know. So I think right. and I believe Michael K uh, has has grown that type of vibe on him. And he just came out and did the same thing what Peter Rosenberg does in the morning on Hot 97. You know what I mean? I see. And and, yeah. and, 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 and and listen, man, that's our players. You can't you can't downsize our players. You know what I mean? Right. Even if they're having a horrible year, we can't downsize. They're our players. Maybe maybe right. Joe Buck could do that and uh and and, and, and maybe Matt Vaskersion on ESPN could do that. But not our own people. And I get people on Twitter for that too. I said, listen, man, don't talk bad about the player, man, because he's trying. You know? Right. Won't you go out there and try to hit a home run? I bet you you can't do it. You know? Right. So give these guys a chance, you know? And they're trying. And I know they are, you know? And and and, and believe me, they're all upset that they got swept in Boston. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and they're going to try everything they can. And the only two hottest hitters you have on the team is 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 uh, Big G and you got uh, Torres. They're the only two guys that are hitting. You know, and Didi, he's a little bit there on the horizon, but that's all you got. You know, the whole team yeah. has to step up, you know, and the Yankees have great pitching. People don't understand that the Yankees have great pitching. It's just that the ball isn't bouncing our way. It's not right. falling in the glove. That's all it is, you know. Right. So right now, the Yankees look like a mediocre team. They look like an average, average offensive team right now because it is you yeah know? they uh they um at least they've had two games against the white Sox, which they should do because the white Sox are an inferior team to the yankees and i i would say i do like michael k i do like michael k but i think that the comments were a little bit a little bit off there that he shouldn't have said those things about uh clint frazier you know who is struggling with uh with concussion uh, symptoms, and uh, I think that was a little bit off. But I do know the Michael K. show, and they can sometimes, uh, you know, they sometimes veer off of sports, and they get into pop culture, or they discuss, they try to be a bit funny, and that yeah. kind of thing on their show, and that's kind of how his show is. But uh, I'm looking forward to the Yankees' long homestand that's coming up, and you're going to the game tomorrow. Yeah. And it'll be a long homestand. They will be playing four against the Texas Rangers, one against the Mets, uh, three against the Blue Jays, and three against the Tampa Bay Rays. So yeah. they'll be home from August 9th to August 19th. Yeah. So starting tomorrow. That's right. And, and, and let me explain uh, one last thing about Michael Kay. 
the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm pressing him so hard is because the Yankees, the Yankees so long ago, they had Mike Francesa on the Yes Network, you know? And, and at that yeah. time, that's when Alex Rodriguez allegedly got busted for steroids. And at that time, everybody has to remember, Alex Rodriguez never tested positive for steroids. The reason why he was suspended is because they found his name on a piece of paper in a doctor's office in Miami. That's the only reason why he never tested positive, okay? He went to the Mike Francesa show to plead his case on on live air saying that the that the commissioner was against him. And he was. He had a thing, he had a vendetta on on A Rod and and and, and A Rod said it. That by bringing A Rod down, that was gonna be his trophy case on his mantle, you know. By doing that, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so by Francesa, Mike Francesa is my favorite sports radio host. He's the Pope of all radio of all sports talk radio. Everybody knows that. And uh-huh. Francesa never said nothing wrong about the Yankees. Francesa never talked about bad or anything about baseball. All he did was let A Rod come up to his studio and plead his case. That's all he did, and he got fired off the Yes Network. Okay, so now you have Michael K speaking, speaking bad about the Yankees, talking bad about the players, and he's still there. That's the problem I have. So the Yankees are real funny. The Yankees are real funny. The management is real funny, and they always, always been real funny. You know, so yeah. they have to. Either reprimand him behind the scenes or something, because it's not right. It's not right. You know, it just you know, it's a it's a it's a rant because you know we got we got players because we are gonna go to World Series. People don't understand I, that, I like but we're gonna go to World Series, and the Yankees. All we have to do is make the playoffs, man. That's it. Okay, we don't make the division. That's no problem. But we're gonna we're gonna get the wild card, and that's a and that's a fact. You know what I mean? So we're coming. We're coming. And guess what? Boston could win all these games. You know what? They can go undefeated all the way from now to the end of the season. But guess what? The playoffs start 0-0. Okay? And you got to win four games. Okay? And let's see if we can win those four games. That's all. You know? So... It's going to be... It's going to be fun baseball, man. It's going to be... This is... Fun baseball, you know, right now. I'm glad you have a positive attitude. That's good. That's good. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of Yankee fans don't, man. And it's very sad, you know. It's very sad because that's the way baseball is, you know. You can be down today and World Series tomorrow. You know, it, it's happened many of times. And how, how many times in history have you seen in any sport the team go undefeated, like the New England Patriots went undefeated. And guess what? They had to play the Giants in the Super Bowl, and we beat them in the Super Bowl. You see? And, and, and it's happened in baseball, too. They go undefeated the whole year, and they, and they, and they lose the first game, and they, or they get swept. <laughs> you know? So it happens. It happens. So Boston hasn't had any downfalls yet. So their downfalls may be in the playoffs. That's a big problem that's going on there. So, um, how do you how, how do you feel about that? Well, I uh, I feel that the Yankees uh, are have a very favorable schedule us right now, and they need to do a very good job against the teams that they're playing against, and uh, keep a positive attitude. And I believe that they can uh, play strong, and hopefully they will be getting Judge back. Probably by the end of uh, August, they'll be getting Judge back, and uh, their lineup can be improved, and then they will work from there. And they still have a very good chance of winning 100 games, and we'll see what happens. We'll see if Boston uh, actually does have a little bit of a slump or pulls down, and the Yankees before the playoffs, three games at Yankee Stadium and three games up in Boston again. So anything can happen, and we still have two months to go. No, absolutely. And you know I have another rant. Okay. You ready for this one? Yes. This, uh, this homestand, no, uh, what is it, next homestand? Uh, they have, um, they are going to be having um, 
the uh, 1998 World Series reunion. Okay. Yes. And uh, guess what? Guess who's not going to be there for the reunion? The old copy top. I said, guess who's not going to be there for the reunion? Who? The Capitan. He's oh, not. He's not wow. on the list of attendees. What kind of crap is that? Oh my! You know, he was the main guy that did it all. Able to make it or something. I don't know all the details about it. Yeah. So um, they they actually released the um the you know the the people who are gonna show up and his name is not on it. Wow. Oh. Wow. That's something. That's something he will be uh, missed. That's for sure. I guess he's so involved with the uh, Marlins right now that I, he might not. It might be scheduling or something, but I'm not sure why he would be there. Yeah, me neither, because uh, two years ago, he came for the 1996 um, uh, celebration. He was there. Right. You know, right. and I was at the game, too. I saw that I was at the game, too, and and that was a hot day, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why why he can't make it this time. I'll, I'll look into it and, and see if I can find some information about it. But, uh, yeah, he'll be missed, that's for sure, for the 98 team. That 98 team won 114 games and won 125 uh, for the total season when you had in the playoffs and uh, beat the San Diego Padres in the World Series. A very strong team. Yeah, that was, that was the... Team. Yeah, that's the greatest Yankee team of all time. Right, right. At least of our lifetimes, anyway. Because uh, many many talk about the 1961 Yankees that hit 240 homers. And that was the year that, of the m and boys, when Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle were battling to break the Babe Ruth home run record at that time. And Mickey Mantle had an injury at the end of the season. He, he uh, received the shot. And it, and his hip, which became infected, and he missed uh, the end of the season. And Roger Maris did finally take it with 61 home runs, and uh, Mickey Mantle finished with 54 that year. And that team won 109 games and beat the Cincinnati Reds in the World Series. Many consider that to be one of the top games as well. And they were managed by Ralph Howe. Yep. Absolutely. I used to um, argue with my father about that all the time. Um, who was the greatest team, the, the 98 or the 61? And you know right. what? We always come back to the 98 team. The 98 team was better. You know, all they had was, you know, what what, had, what was going for them, what makes the 1961 team great is is the story of the, of the year. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they also yeah. played well and great and everything. Yeah, they had a Awesome team, of course. Can't deny them. They're all Hall of Famers and everything. But the story of the Eminem boys, that what makes them greater than myth and legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's exactly. what makes the Yankees, that story. You know, so you can't really take away from that. But no. the 98 team is a better team. They had, the better, they had better players on that team. They had the full squad. That, they had that an all around team. Oh yeah. That I mean the sixty one Yankees couldn't even match up to the ninety eight Yankees with Mariano and all these Tino and Posada and Bernie and O'Neal and and, 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 and and well we had uh Tim Raines, uh uh, uh Scott right. Brocious, uh, uh all kind of people, man. It was it was all, that was an awesome year, man. And and I was and I was privileged and lucky enough to go to Game 2 of that uh, 1998 World Series. Wow, that's wonderful. I was at a World Series in 78. I was at two World Series games in 78 against the Dodgers. And uh, the one uh, I was at Game uh, 4 at Yankee Stadium and, uh, and Game 5, basically. And uh, in Game 5, that I believe... Uh, that was uh, the game that Ron Guidry was pitching, and he did not have his best stuff. And a lot of blind shots were being hit down the third base line, and Greg Nettles was making amazing plays. And we were sitting on the third base side, and uh, uh, and uh, he made amazing plays. And uh, and the Yankees eventually went on to win that World Series in six games over the Dodgers in '78. 
Yeah, that was another historic part of the Yankee history as well. You know what I mean? And yeah, that and that came and back from fourteen games out that year. They were fourteen out in July, and uh, all of the controversy with Billy Martin. And Billy Martin was fired, and then I was at the All Star Game. I mean, not All Star Game. Excuse me, the Old Timers Game, when Billy Martin was announced to return as the Yankee manager in 1980. The fans went crazy. Bob, Bob Lemon took all, took over and had a very common influence on the team. And of course, they had the one game playoff against the Boston Red Sox that year, and that was that was an amazing year itself. Yeah, I, I'll give you a little trivia question on what we on what you just said on the Yankees announcing a player's return. Who was the last player that the Yankees announced in that way at the stadium that a player would return to back to the Yankees? And I'm going to give you a hint. It's the old stadium. No, you don't have to tell me. I know. Uh, Roger Clemens. There you go, Roger Clemens. That guy was horrible, but he did it. <laughs> yeah, Roger Clemens. We oh. didn't like Roger Clemens a lot when he was on the Boston Red Sox, but then he did a good job for a number of years on the Yankees. Yeah, he got um, his his too too bad his career is diminished, man, because he was known for taking steroids, and they got him on the list, and it's a shame, man, that he's not yeah. gonna be in Hall of in you know Cooperstown or whatever, man. It's a shame, man. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He. Uh, he was a bulldog out there on the mound. And then, of course, the whole situation with Mike Piazza, when he, he smashed Piazza in the head with a 95-mile-per-hour fastball and uh, in an interleague series against the Mets. And then during the World Series, this was in 2000, the ball, the bat, was, was broken by Piazza when he hit the ball. And it went to Clemens. And Clemens picked up the broken bat and seemed to have thrown it at Piazza as Piazza was running down the first baseline. And that was a major controversial thing that happened that year between Piazza and Roger Clemens. Yeah, I still think he threw it at him. Yeah, it sure looked that way. You know, that was a great Yankee uh, era, man. Those guys had a lot of fight in them, man. They were tough, man. You know, yeah. all they had was yeah. toughness, you know. The 98 team with Chuck Knobloch and Scott Brocious and Paul O'Neill and Derek Peter and Tino Martinez and, uh, and Jorge Posada and uh, they were in El Duque. That was, uh, that was a very strong team in 98. Yeah, man. El Duque. They, oh, man. And the bullpen was Andy Pennant. crazy. Andy Pennant. Yeah. And uh, they had a bunch of other players too, man. That was an awesome yeah. year, man. That was an awesome year. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I love uh, Yankee history, too. And uh, the game that I went to for the first time was when I was five years old. That's when I became a Yankee fan. My, my late grandfather brought me to what was called Mickey Mantle Day. He had just retired. And, uh, and they were having a black ceremony for him when I was only a five-year-old child. And uh, and uh, that was the first game that I went to. I was born in the kindergarten that year, and that was many decades ago. And uh, and uh, I became a Yankee fan at that point when he brought me. I obviously remember that game more from the old film than than from actually being there. I still have a child's memory of it, but but uh, that was a uh, big game in Yankee history. It was Mickey Mantle Day, and they offered a day of gave him a plaque, and uh, my grandfather looked me up on his shoulders a few times, and mm. the cheering for Mickey Mantle was tremendous uh, in that game, and I still have, you know, a childhood memory of it. Yeah, I can, man, that's that's awesome, man, that you, that, that you actually got to see the three stadiums, you know? Not too many people got to see the three stadiums, you know? Right, well, I was, I was a young kid before Yankee Stadium was refurbished, you know. I also had a couple of little league trips to uh, Yankee Stadium in 72 and 73 when I was a little league uh, kid for uh, North Edison Little League in New Jersey. And we made some group trips to Yankee Stadium at that time, too. So, so yes, and then, uh, and then uh, it reopened in 76 after two years of refurbishment and rebuilding. 
and the Yankees played at Chase Stadium for a few years. Yeah, um, the old stadium was great. I, I, to this day, I can visualize the old stadium, walking the halls. I could tell you every section, everything about Yankee Stadium and the old one. I could still see it. Cause uh, I, cause I, I, I used to go to the games all the time, batting practice, get balls all the time. I used to have it down to a science where, uh, damn, we got people flying by. Anyway, we got. Uh, I used to have it down to a science where, uh, at the old stadium, they had this little gift shop next to the ticket booth there, where you could buy the tickets, and they would open up and. Inside there was a gate where they would uh, open up when the gates open, right? And there was a security guard there. And what I would do is I would wait there till five o'clock, and then when they open the gates, I'll give him my ticket. He'll he'll take it, and then I'll run in. As I'm already so far in the stadium that as I'm walking by the the, the ticket gates, they're just opening the gates. From the from the wow. floor, yeah, they they're not even open yet, so they have to open the actual uh, store gate and, and 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 bring it up. And I'm actually passing them as they're doing it, and I would collect all the baseballs already there, or every time wow. I come out at least five, wow. six, seven, eight baseballs because they already hit a bunch of baseballs into the stands already. You see, wow. so I would just jump, yes, yeah, so I would just jump right in into the seats and walk through the seats all the way around, and you pick them up as you go. You know, that was yeah. the old stadium, and and, and 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 luckily, my dad worked in Yankee Stadium too. He he worked uh, right behind the Yankee dugout there, and he was a security guard for the uh, for the A listers. So if you was the mayor or celebrity or whatever, you would go to his section, and he would take your ticket and let you in all the way down to the mayor's box. You know, so I got to watch a lot of games from there. Sounds great. And I, I went up all. By the time I was 14 years old, I was basically going to Yankee Stadium by myself from New Jersey, going in by train and taking the subways up. So I know that A train and D train by heart, basically, because I've been doing it for well over 40 years, going up to Yankee Stadium and, uh, and uh, many, many trips to Yankee Stadium in the 70s and through the 80s. All the way up until today, and uh, great memories of a long time being a long time Yankee fan. Uh, um, I'm gonna tell you one thing: my last Yankee game in the old stadium will be forever imprinted in my mind, because uh, in that last September, um, the tickets were crazy. You couldn't get a ticket for nothing, and the last game I saw was against the Cincinnati Reds, and. Uh -huh. um, and uh, Ken Griffey was still playing on the team, and he was an old he was an old husky fat Ken Griffey already. He was DHing, and it was a misty night. It was a mist in the air. It was gloomy, and he and he and he hit two monstrous no I think three monstrous pop ups all the way to deep right center field, man. And I will never forget his big because you know I'm sitting in the front row. Behind the dugout, and I never forget him trotting off the field. You know, the old wow. Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, man, that that always be imprinted when he used to play with uh Cincinnati over there, and then he then he left them, and then yeah. that was it. That was the end of his career. But he played for my a lot of teams. Was, uh, <clears throat> my last game for the old Yankee Stadium was also in September of two thousand eight. And it was late September, and I believe they were playing the Baltimore Orioles. And it was not the final game when Derek Jeter uh, gave the speech, but it was a few, few games before then. And uh, yeah, that was it. I had got the ticket well before the season started. And uh, uh, that I remember going uh, with one of, my, one of my friends. And uh, that was something that was a bit sad. It was a bit sad, but now they have this beautiful stadium now. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, um, like I said, my dad used to work there, and on the final game of this of the uh, old stadium, you, and, and my dad was a correctional officer, so he's seen the worst of the jails, you know what I'm saying? And he right. said that final out was the most dangerous that he ever um, felt, because those wow. people started pushing, 
They were trying to get on the field. I mean, they were trying to break seats. They were trying to... These people were looking like savages, man. You know, and it, and they got kind of dangerous there, and he kind and he kind of got you know kind of flustered himself. You know, I said, yeah. damn, that, that that it must have been really crazy there. And then uh, when he 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 stayed till they turned out the lights, they ripped up all kind of stuff. Every employee got to write their name on the left field file pole. So uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm still looking for that foul pole. So if anybody can comment and tell me where the hell that foul pole is, let me know. Because I know the right field one was cut up into pieces. Right. You know, so I don't know what they did with that old one. So it'd be nice to know what they did with it. You know? It reminds me of <clears throat> uh, in 76 when the Yankees played the Kansas City Royals and Chris Chambliss hit the walk-off home run off of Mark Littell. In Game Five of the American League Championship Series against the Kansas City Royals, and the fans charged the field. It was crazy the way they charged the field, and they were all over the field. And that happened quite a lot in the seventies when fans would charge the field. But yeah, that they used to stopped. exit out through the that center field. <clears throat> yeah, that. Oh, oh, yeah. Before that, many decades before that, they would let the fans exit right, right through the field. They would go out through center field. They would walk out on the field at that time. And all through the 30s, 40s, 50s, that's how the fans exited. it. They would walk on the field and walk out. But yeah. in the 70s, they were charging the field after a big Yankee victory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. That's some a lot of great memories, man. I guess, um, right. I guess, I guess that'll do it for the uh, first inning podcast. What do you say? Okay. Okay, sounds good. What we have to do is say that the Yankees have a long 11 game homestand coming up, and uh, they really have to do the best they can and play as well as they can and not worry about the Red Sox for now. They'll meet up with the Red Sox later in the season. Yeah, that's all we can say really about it right now. They all, all you have to do is play and make it to September and make it in the playoffs. That's it. That's the main right. goal, man, because unless... Boston comes with some huge downfall because I mean we're only nine ten games away, you know. But yeah. if they have a, it's two months left still too, so understand there's still two full months left. So Boston could have a downfall as well too, and we can catch up to them too. So right, strange, stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah, so we won't know until it happens. <laughs> you exactly. know. So uh, exactly. yeah, I guess that's it for the first inning podcast. I'm the BX Bomber, along with uh, Roger, the big Yankee fan. And uh, give a thumbs up. Tell us that you care. And we'll really appreciate it. You want to say anything before we go? Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll say what I always say. I always enjoy doing these with you. And uh, enjoy the game tomorrow night. And I'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. We'll see you folks later. See ya.